I was uh, listening to Sweetcast do an interview, and uh, he saw me in the chat. And he said something like, oh, yeah, I enjoy your channel. I, I try to watch all your videos. I thought, maybe you don't want to say that out loud. <laughs> you probably, did, probably don't want to admit that. Anyway, uh, he's, he's got a great channel. And he does some great live streams. This is about the once in future. That's the title, not once in future king, just once in future. I saw your boy Zach mentioned it in one of his community posts, but he wasn't going to review it. So I decided to take a look at the three issues they have out. And oh boy, listen to this little blurb on their description page. When a group of nationalists, guess what color they are, uses an ancient artifact to bring a villain from Arthurian myth back from the dead to gain power, ex-monster hunter Bridget McGuire, Bridget McGuire, escapes her retirement home, so she's a grandma, and pulls her unsuspecting grandson Duncan, a museum curator, into a world of magic and mysticism to defeat a legendary threat. Best-selling writer Kieran Gillen, a bunch of stupid books, and artists explore the mysteries of the past, get ready for it, the complicated truths of our history, and the power of family to save the day, especially if that family has secret bunkers of ancient weapons and decades of experience hunting the greatest monsters in Britain's history. Okay, it doesn't tell you much. It doesn't tell you much, except, you know, the, the female grandmother is going to be the, uh, the lead. And the complicated truths of our history, that should set off at least, at least a yellow flashing line uh, alarm. This is the Once in Future Boom Studios, Kieran Gallen, and he hates the English. Uh, it seems to be the whole theme of all three books is open borders for England. The men are feminine, and the women are brave risk takers. Only an Indian woman can save England from the English. To save England, we need to replace all the native English people with folks from the Middle East which just so happens to be an odd coincidence because Kieran Gallen also happens to not be English, yet he wants to destroy it. What kind of... Oh, there's going to be swearing on this video. So, um, you, yeah, just, you know, I can't get through the video without swearing. So I'll put a little warning in the, in the beginning. Uh, what kind of asshole goes to someone else's country and actively tries to undermine it? I think they're usually called spies. And like people were saying in the community post, yeah, the covers were fantastic, but the art in the interior art falls down quite a bit. The story is so insanely bad. Basically, English people are seeing their homeland being taken over by invaders from the Middle East, and they resurrect a king to fight these Middle Eastern invaders. I'm rooting for the king. Kill them all. Let God sort them out. What else is a country supposed to do when it's invaded? Give the invaders welfare and watch them replace you? A nation without borders is not a nation. It's just a chaotic economic zone where nobody plans for the future because there's no cohesion, no unity. When you have diversity, you get what you see in America now. High violent crime, low trust, constant fighting between small groups. Whites, blacks, Mexicans, Jews, Muslims, all at odds with each other. Diverse nations fail. They are high-crime shitholes. Why is Japan so awesome? Because it's only Japanese. Why was Europe so awesome before this open borders cancer? Because it was full of Europeans, who are freaking awesome. This is the most bizarre comic I have ever read. The writer wants us to root for the invaders who are trying to destroy the United Kingdom. Get fucked, buddy. They can fuck right back off to the shitholes they came from. And you can go back also, because there's no way in hell that you're English. How have we fallen so far where it's considered edgy to say that England should be for the English? I always use the examples of Japan and Israel, because it triggers the hell out of liberals. They allow a few foreigners in, but they don't give them full civil rights. When foreigners in Israel get out of line, they ship them to Europe. They just discard their trash in Europe. Japan allowed a dozen Muslim refugees in. Then, when they started committing crimes, they simply sent them back to Africa. In 100 years, Japan and Israel will still be around. Western Europe will be Muslim. The three books in this series are the perfect example of the hypocrisy of the extreme left. But it's interesting that people on Twitter are finally talking about the population substitution that is occurring in Europe. 
I can't even say certain hot phrases on YouTube without getting the video limited. It's a very powerful enemy when they control the battlefield itself. Now, I know you guys hear this and you think it's tinfoil hat right-wing conspiracy stuff, but it's all related. Insert It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia meme here. Comics, Comics Gate, is intimately tied up in the culture war. Read these people's comics, then read their Twitter. They absolutely hate you. They hate America, Europe, anything with POLs in it. Some of you know what I'm talking about. The 4chan, Reddit, BitChute, Gab guys. I promise you, I, I originally wrote, I promise you that all these other pussy comic uh, review channels, but I'll edit out pussy, I'll just say, I promise you that all these other comic review channels also know what is going on, but they are scared to talk about it. Because when you do, you might have CNN dox you, or Antifa get you fired to destroy your life. Remember Han Asshole Solo? CNN threatened to dox him, which would almost certainly result in him getting fired, having his bank close his account, or getting violently attacked. Dial it down. Okay. Ignoring the bigger picture for a second. The story doesn't make sense. Kieran wants us to root for the bad guys, the colonizers, but it takes three issues before they lead up to it. So by this time, you're $12 deep, and you know that you got ripped off. Any book where the blonde-haired guy is the bad guy is most likely propaganda. If you, if you make the antagonists a group of men from Pakistan who want to establish a caliphate... Oh, notice the symbolism? Notice the symbolism that's lacking. I know this is a crappy little Kindle. In this image down here. Take a careful look. This shitty little... Actually, this Kindle's great. I really got my money worth for 40 bucks. This is the grave. This is the image in the background. What's missing, guys? Get in focus. That's a grave. What's missing? Or um, have them be a group of communist globalists who want to destroy England from within. Uh, that I could understand. They would resurrect the king and wipe out the Muslim communist invaders. That would be a righteous battle. They can even continue it into a crusade, where they go to the source of evil and destroy it. The very idea of this story is to destroy English heroes. They want to destroy history. There's a scene where one character, the lead protagonist, who's an old grandma, is telling her grandson that the old English kings were the bad guys, because they didn't want to allow invaders in to diversify them and create a multicultural society where the English got outbred by Middle Easterners. Are you fucking insane? It's like saying that you're racist if you don't allow someone to rob you or rape you, except that the rules never apply to them because they live in gated communities. As you can tell, this story has me rightfully pissed off, and it annoys me that I have to give the disclaimer that I'm not some Alex Jones conspiracy nut. This stuff is actually happening. You are free to read all the comics I look at. Get on Twitter. Follow these people for two months. You will start going down the rabbit hole very quickly. Once you take the red pill, there is no going back. And to add insult to injury, this story could be fun. You have the plucky, gun-toting grandmother, the reluctant, naive hero, and the beautiful princess. Except that you ruined it. You made the guy a totally ineffectual, effeminate pussy, and you made the romantic interest some brown girl from the Middle East. The very people who are invading and colonizing England. You don't have to be right-wing to want England to remain English. That's actually the true meaning of diversity. Having unique, diverse places. Alright, I take it back. Some of the interior art is pretty cool. But, um... This is a ancient England English king. And he's the bad guy for wanting to keep England English. If you replace the English with Pakistanis, then it's no longer England. It's just a colony of Pakistan. If the left think colonialism is so bad, then that principle applies to everyone. If it was a wrongful act in the past, it's still a wrongful act, and shows you that they either want revenge, or you simply want to wipe out the native Europeans. It's not a conspiracy when it's actually happening. The whole character motivation in the story doesn't make sense. You're asking the reader to cheer on the destruction of the indigenous people. The story is pure propaganda, but it's not very good. As soon as you see that the bad guys are blonde, you know most likely who the writer is, and you know you're in for a racist ride. I don't know if you guys know anything about England, 
but it's not the English who are committing crime. When people started to wake up to who was pimping children, eyes started to open. It was Pakistanis. Pakistanis are about the Pakistanis are about less than two percent of the population. They commit about ninety percent of the attacks on children. Who commits the violent knife crime in England? The Africans do. Who fills the English prisons? Middle East and African men do. Why on earth would England want these super predators in their country? All thanks to Hillary Clinton for inventing such a great phrase. This comic has the people who want to get rid of these violent savages portrayed as the bad guys. In what kind of upside-down clown world would you root for the violent third-world colonizers? Let me put it this way, and here's where it gets spicy. Switch the story around. Have a group of Palestinian freedom fighters invade and colonize Israel. Try to publish that and everyone would lose their freaking minds. And I guarantee if you publish that, you would be doxxed. Your life would never be the same. It would be pretty much ruined forever. Kieran may as well come out and say that he's racist against the people of the light, the nicest people on earth. These idiots write this racist trash and they think we don't see who is writing it. It's become a cliche meme because it's so true. I don't even have to look at his Twitter. I am 90% certain what I will see because I see it so often. It's like they wear a flashing neon sign over their head that blinks, I hate white people. And they expect not to get called out for it because that would make you racist. Well, I'm in the perfect position to call it out. As a woman of color from an oppressed and marginalized community, I don't have the power or privilege to be racist. I will stand up for the white people. Consider me your POC ally. Like, comment, subscribe. If you want to enter the art contest, click on the uh, title. It'll get, take you to the links or the Discord or whatever. Or if you want to support me on Patreon or buy me a coffee or get a t-shirt and the proceeds of the t-shirt will be donated to that uh, Captain Robert April's charity who was a, another YouTuber that got injured in an accident. Take a look at this church, guys. Tell me what you see. Beautiful stained glass. Gothic architecture. I don't know anything about architecture, but, uh, you know, columns and flying buttresses and all that kind of shit. Um, beautiful. Beautiful stained glass. Stained glass is beautiful. You know, very light and airy. It's made out of heavy stone, but it's beautiful, right? This is a church. What's missing, guys? What's missing from the church? What do you normally see at churches besides just beautiful ambiguous stained glass where there's no image what do you normally see in stained glass it's been a while since i've been in church but i do remember i still remember what what i saw in the stained glass you guys remember church you remember what the stained glass images were remember the stations of the cross my god it's all coming back to me um you know what churches usually have <laughs> you know what, even if you're not in uh in icon iconography churches usually have crosses or crucifixes some churches have a problem with icons so they don't have crucifixes but they always have crosses they always have imagery i mean the catholic church has got a lot of a lot of imagery that the other christians seem to um really 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 don't like guys what's missing in this freaking image is any religious iconography is this a church, a, a mosque, a synagogue? Well, no, if it was a mosque or a synagogue, they would show whatever, the hammer and sickle of the Muslims and the, the six-pointed Star of David of the Jews. But this is a Christian house of worship, so they show freaking nothing. Because the guy who's writing this not only hates white people, apparently also hates Christians. Uh... Uh, guys, if you support me on Patreon, I will use 100% of the proceeds of that money to buy comic books and um, and destroy them on camera. I can't exactly justify buying garbage for $4 an issue and destroying it. I just can't. I can't spend the money for $4 for garbage. I, would, I won't do it. It would, it would hurt me to do it. But um, I will spend the money on bullets to shoot it at the range. I can uh, post up comics at the uh, the gun range and just blast it blast it i'd probably spend more money on bullets than i would on the comics but whatever these are the bad guys whitey mcwhiteface mcanglo-saxon green eyes blonde hair red hair green eyes of course beautiful beautiful people of the white of the white <laughs> of the light i am actually a person of color myself not a person of the light not anglo-saxon or western european person of the darkness um 
This is three issues of absolute dog shit propaganda. Where the ending of issue three is, uh, she's got her thirty out six out, and she's got the crosshairs on this beautiful, beautiful person of the light. Just the just the best people on earth, the kindest, most generous people, and she's gonna murder them because the author Kieran uh, Kieran Gillen hates you people. I don't hate you people. I'm your ally. I'm going to stick up for you people. Anyway, guys, like, comment, subscribe, uh, enter the Discord, the art contest. Send me your art, and I will use it. And I will uh, put it on a t-shirt, and I'll split the profits with you. All 75 cents. I guess I'll catch you next episode.